it's Betsy with Happily Ever After etc and welcome back to another garden video. So today we are actually doing our June garden tour. Dun, 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 dun. It is literally June 1st and so many things in the garden are blooming and filling in. I, every month I say it looks the best it ever has but again it looks the best it ever has. So. We're going to get started around the corner. Our gardenia all the way down by the shed has one bloom. It is settling in, but I thought it was dead, so I'm excited for my one bloom. We'll get started there. Almost all of the hydrangeas are blooming, so we will take a little hydrangea tour. My uh, lantana and my super tunia vistas and snowdrift and fuchsia are filling in. The butterfly bushes are blooming. The fox gloves are starting, the fox glove, everything looks really good right now. And I could literally go plant by plant and say that 90% of them are blooming right now. So, you know, some are blooming better than others, but almost all of them have at least one bloom. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, y'all, we are going to start as always, up in front of the shed, you can see I have been working on this area a little bit. Still have nothing down. Eventually we will get compost down. And with all the rain we've been having, we're getting more weeds, so definitely need something on the ground. But our pop star hydrangea is a kind of marooning out these blooms will probably need to be deadheaded soon, but you can see it is putting out new growth, new blooms. Our Texas sage is blooming. Hope you can hear me over the helicopters because they are flying. But these guys are finally starting to look really good after being in the ground for a while. I was worried they were getting woody at the bottom. And so, when I bought them, they were full of blooms and they are kind of getting back to that. Our Rose of Sharon that has been full of buds just blooms new pretty blossoms every day. I cannot wait until this guy is like 10 feet tall. I mean, honestly, it will just be stunning. But until then, I am still enjoying the blooms on the little plant. You can tell it was about a, this tall when we planted it. So everything up here is new growth. Then you may notice the uh, elephant in the room. <laughs> My two new knockout rose standards. I was not planning to put these here. I wanted to put something but I wasn't sure what. And my mom bought me these for my birthday. So they are actually a yellow, like a pale, pale butter yellow, which you know is maybe not my first uh, pick. I kind of wanted a pink, but we've got pink here, pink here, pink here, lavender here. And so I decided to go with a butter yellow for the knockout roses. I'd really wanted some limelight hydrangeas, but A, they were way more expensive and B, I want something that's going to put out lots of blooms all summer long, all season long, and that will stay in a nice kind of tidy ball as I trim them. And so that's why I picked these and they should, I just, you can see where I cut off all the old buds from the nursery. I'm going to plant them hopefully later today with some rose tone and they should bloom for us here in the sun pretty much all summer long. But, uh, I'm very excited about them. Thanks mom. So from here, the shed, Ooh, I got some cucumbers to pick and a watermelon I need to support. So we're gonna have to do some raised bed gardening. Probably have some 
strawberries to pick, so I haven't come out and looked at those in a minute. But look at my little watermelon. He was not nearly this big even a day or two ago, so got to get him supported. Got to get some of these uh, runners brought back in. All my little zinnias and uh, cut flowers are doing well. Hopefully they will start to flower at some point. My super tunia fuchsia, these are vista fuchsias, are doing fabulous. And my pugster pinkers, you can see I need to deadhead them. They were full of blooms and they are putting out new buds. Got looks like three cucumbers to harvest. So that'll be some delicious salads this week. We've got lots of delicious strawberries in here. Oh yeah, need to come get those. Lots of fun things going on in here. Milkweed is going, the Peggy Martin Rose is going. The weeds are doing great, really excellent quality weeds. My white hydrangea needs those dead parts cut back. But look, it is finally putting off some blooms for the season. Still not sure how this guy's doing here because the leaves are got these kind of funky spots on them, but he's a pretty little bush. And uh, Knockout is starting to put out its second round of buds. Glads need to be cut back, but they were beautiful. Oh, well, there you go. Milkweed is doing fabulous. Hopefully it will attract some caterpillars or butterflies, I guess. Air conditioner is air conditioning. All my little baby coneflowers are lumping along. Maybe at some point I can plant them out. That would be nice. I don't know why they're taking so long to get big. My butterfly garden is doing beautifully, although my lantana, for as much as it is growing, is not blooming. So maybe he needs some more fertilizer. I don't know. My All my middle flowers are going. And the Dylan Parsley is going, so at the very least, that's good. Oh, I'm falling over. Our Gara probably needs to be cut back, but I was waiting until these tall blooms were about done, and I think they are. I just, I love how tall and airy they look like butterflies dancing on the wind. And then right now... The cone flowers are just the star of the show over here. I've got so many grasshoppers though. And I'm trying to get a handle on because they are trying to eat these. If I do not spray them almost daily, I just lose blooms. Look at this. It's infuriating. And I have to spray in the evening so that um, the bees do not take anything back to the hives. So it's just a constant battle, but they look beautiful and you can see there are still buds everywhere. So this plant, especially like these are all about to go nuts. I did get a new little uh, sign down here. I thought it was cute. And my bee bomb is really growing. So hopefully he will start blooming soon. Speaking of blooming, though, the salvia is doing fabulously. This unplugged pink salvia, I'm loving it. It is fabulous, and it, it's just bloom, 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 blooms. Definitely one of my favorites. The alyssum looks fabulous when it's all in bloom, but it's kind of going in cycles where it will have a full flush of blooms and then it will be a minute and then I'll get more. But I've been fertilizing it every week. So, you know, not a loss, just not 
not snow white all the time across the way the alyssum i grew from seed it seems to be blooming more i guess and the snow princess is doing pretty well but it's not even as far along as these now of course i did plant these about a month earlier so you never know we'll see but uh the pink salvia is starting to bloom so that's nice but i when i planted these thought they were pink salvia I'm not 100% convinced they are anymore, and I think they might be weeds that I transplanted. So I'm going to have to ask my mom. This is pink salvia. This is pink salvia. I'm not 100% convinced. This, the big leaves on these, like these do not look like pink salvia. I, I think that might be a weed. We'll ask mom. But look how pretty those row standards are going to be once I get them leveled and put in straight. Ooh. Especially the yellow, just butter yellow globes of fabulousness. These zinnias are really starting to take off. You can see I'm having to spray them as well because the, uh, the grasshoppers really like those. They also really like the daisies. Um, but the oak leaf hydrangea, they don't like that. And it is beautiful. The blooms are just aging out to that beautiful dusty pink color. But it's so weird because that usually happens way closer to fall than June. Everything came up and bloomed so beautifully so early in the season. I have no idea what fall is going to look like down here. It may look like no flowers at all. Our little Super Tunia Vistas taking off, coming through the orb. I like it to fill in this whole corner, so we, we will see if it does. Lots of weeds. My little Laura Pedlum is doing wonderfully. And the Catmint still putting up lots of new shoots. Eventually it will bloom again and look fabulous. The Cosmos that we planted here all died. For whatever reason, this spot, even with the extra water, is just not loving it. So I think I need to plant something more drought tolerant in here. But I'm not super worried about it because eventually the oak leaf will fill in more. So maybe we'll just put some lambs here right here in between the catmint and the butterfly bush. Because this guy will only continue to get bigger. And this guy will only continue to get bigger. So we don't really need anything in here other than I tried to put cosmos, which are annuals, so that these three things can continue to grow together. And then they'll have space for growth next year. Either way, this right here is one of my favorite like views in the garden is through that little pathway down, down the way. The blue and white salvia is doing fabulously. It has been blooming all season since I first planted it in March. It was one of the first things I planted. The, uh, the foxgloves, this was the first one that bloomed over here, and he's about done. But I've still got three that haven't bloomed. You can see they are still putting up bloom stalks. There's one right there. So we'll still have more. The... Uh, purple dream lilies have been blooming this is their first year so i've only been getting one or two buds open at a time but that's okay and then the stargazer lilies are putting out buds so hopefully we will have uh, blooms on these very soon and then i have my little annual strip the impatience some purple royal carpet sweet alyssa i grew from seed pink shades verbena and lobelia and they are all doing really well i did not intend to have four things over here it just kind of turned out that way but i really like it the impatience just keep blooming in the shade and growing closer and closer together so hopefully 
you know, the closer to the end of summer, the less ground we will see through here. This Alyssum loves its life. Unlike his sisters on the other side of the garden, he's never without blooms. So definitely want to grow more of this next year. The pink shades is doing well and constantly blooming, unlike my purple one. So that's good. These cosmos are doing okay, but I need to cut them back. My uh, summer crush hydrangea, you can see, is putting out new blooms. Here, here are the newer ones. The old ones have aged to this dusty pink, and uh, they'll be ready to be deadheaded pretty soon here. Then we do have the one drumstick allium that has successfully put up a bud. Just one of all the ones I planted. We have foliage all throughout here. You can see it on the ground. Planted a whole swath of them. This is the only successful one. The others all grew. This is the only one that's blooming though. So, you know, I'll take it. And hopefully the others will root in and bloom for us next year. But speaking of things that are doing really well, this Lobelia is literally blooming his head off. He is always covered in blue. He is beautiful. I love it. I planted the dark blue Lobelia last year and it just died. And this is the proven winner's blue sky it's fabulous so we'll see if it comes back it's a 50 50 in our zone but uh we'll see there's another wisteria runner i need to put up around the tree but uh even if this lobelia doesn't come back i think i will definitely plant him again i might plant him a little tighter this one that gets a smidge more sun is you can see bigger and happier than the one that gets more shade but they're all three blooming so i think if they were just a little tighter i wanted him to really fill in this whole area he still might but see our daisies are blooming they just seem to bloom in turns like they're never all three going at the same time planted them at the same time and then there is the rosy returns. And these guys, this is their first year. I literally planted them like a month ago. And you can see there are just constant buds. My Barbara Mitchell daylily that I planted three years ago, this is his first year to bloom. And I've only had four blooms on each plant. I've had dozens on each of these plants. So definitely uh, like those. My other foxglove here, but you can see there are more blooming coming up. More uh, tiger lilies. We have the front of the swoop. The zinnias, they are really growing together and the gumfrina. I'm going to cut these back by half because they have been really wilting since I planted them. And the Veronica needs to be cut back as well because he has pretty much bloomed out his first, um, first group of buds, but that little bit of blue is hanging on there. Either way, I'm just loving this mix of all the tall, pretty, spiky plants in the middle. That's really what I wanted, was just a conglomeration of buds. All my self-seeded zinnias, the tall ones from last year, are doing well. Hopefully I'll be able to transplant those soon. And even this little purple um, sweet alyssum that I thought was 100% dead, is coming back so there you go Whew, gotta find good spots to step
Purple Dream Lily. These are very pretty. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. All right, I'm out. We're going to go ahead, pop across the walkway, continue the tour. So, oh man, I haven't looked over here in a second and this is a giant weed. Let's pull that out. <sighs> That's like a whole plant. Great. These little guys, that's like the third one I've had to pull out of this area. There's another one. They, they get right under the hydrangea and the leaves look so similar until they get big that they're really easy to miss. <laughs> they get gigantic, but the hydrangea itself is what I'm showing you. She is beautiful. This is my balloon struck. She puts out these beautiful pink blooms. They can be purple or blue, can dependent on your soil type. But in my soil, she is pink. In my soil, almost all hydrangeas are pink, which honestly, I'm good with. I love pink. So she is just beautiful. It's kind of odd that most of the bushes here and then these ones are coming forward this year. Typically she blooms more side to side, but I'm not going to give up on her. Then we have, I have to do a whole video on these foxgloves when they finally all bloom. But look, we've got that bloom socks coming up in quite a few. And the whole goal is just to have a whole bunch of them back here. Even the bitty baby ones we just planted are doing well. Oh, that's a good size weed. So, you know, doing good. And then our zinnias back here. These are the tall zinnias that we want to transplant some more from across the way. Uh, they're all looking very pretty. Very pretty. And our catmint's looking pretty. And our verbena is starting to finally come back and bloom a little. So, you know loving it. I literally just weeded like three days ago. Sometimes in the summer with the rain, there's just a million weeds every day and you can just do what you can do. The lantana is finally winning in this spot. As you know, I have tried several different plants here over the years and I think the lantana is winning. She's growing in, she's blooming, She's out even growing the gomfrina, which typically gomfrina grows everything in my area. So loving it. My baby cone flowers will probably not be big for a year or maybe two. So the scale is a little off right now, but the lantana and the gomfrina in my zone are perennials. So just imagine this spot in three years with the mounding lantana then the gumfrina, and then three to four foot high comb flowers in the back. It's going to be good. These super tunia vista snowdrift are like, I mean, they're huge in these planters. I love it so much. They are perfect to come out of these egg tops and our video we did where we did fixing three common problems with drip obviously worked because this guy is almost caught up with her sister which was the goal aha and now the right side of the garden so my lace cap this is my twist and shout well my established one the one across the way is still little and she only has two blooms this year for some reason hopefully she'll put out more they do bloom all season these are just the ones from the first round. They are beautiful. They're just, usually there's a lot more, but we had that hard, hard freeze. So I'm guessing that is half the problem. Super Tunia Vista bubble gum, looking a little sparse, but coming in.
pen cushion, the April Night Salvia, more of that pink shades verbena. Pentas are blooming. My one of my baby fox gloves is blooming. That's so cute. Just a little pop of color. These comb flowers, they are the shorter variety, so they never will get as tall as the other ones, but that's why I planted them here at the front, and I love them here because they just bloom uh, constantly, constant color. And unlike a lot of flowers, once they bloom, they hold their color for a very long time. These started blooming late March, and they've had color ever since. So, you know, that is great. They're also very deer and rabbit resistant, all that fun stuff. And the bees love them. There's always bees and hummingbirds and uh, butterflies on them. So, you know, coneflowers are excellent for everybody. My Barbara Mitchell is done blooming for the season, but I'm not complaining. You can see here. So one, two, three, four, five buds there. One, two, three, four there. So we had nine buds on this plant for the entire season compared to the new ones over there that have been bloom, bloom, blooming. That's still great. She'll only continue to bloom more as she goes on. More weeds in here. I should do just a weed tour sometime. Y'all would be very impressed. It's just gardening, y'all, you know? But the catmint is really loving this spot. And you can see all of the new growth that it's putting up with buds on the end. So eventually we will have a spectacular show for catmint here. Our little agapanthus. This is the ever twilight one. This one bud bloom just about bloomed out, but he is supposed to bloom continuously from spring to fall, which is why I bought him. And uh, I don't have another bloom stock yet, but my mom also got one and she has a second bloom stock. So cross your fingers, we'll get one. We only planted those this, this summer. So, you know, sometimes it takes a while. More fox gloves, salvia. My butterfly bush is literally coming out with more blooms. This one looks fabulous. And then the raspberry cream gum frina. I love these colors together. She looks so perky and fabulous. Got pentas and salvia in here still taking off. Lantana, knockout rose is putting out more blooms. Super tunias are looking great. more lantana and then we've got a whole mix of uh, zinnias that have self seeded themselves and I'm just going to let them go foxglove zinnias that I seeded that are finally getting ready to bloom my other butterfly bush and I might need to I don't know this guy compared to the other one looks really uh, struggling on the inside not sure why so we'll see this salvia is struggling but this is a annual salvia that has come back for like three years so he may need to be replaced at some point and some point maybe next year but he looks fine for now and then my saucy wine salvia which if you guys watch the video where I planted this guy he has just about tripled in size and is fabulous and honestly as much room as he kind of wants in here he can kind of have because this half of the garden is in the shade and blooms has way less blooms so I will take these tall spikes of burgundy goodness and run with them fox gloves should be blooming soon these are second year fox gloves Another baby fox glove. He's little but adorable. 
and patients that are doing fabulous. You can see it's water time. If you watch my drip video, this is how this, this little spindly guy comes out and they love it. Everything over here, we kind of planted this spring. So it's still babies, but you can see like we planted a whole bunch of tubers for cyclamen right here. And look, look at those baby tubers. They are all leafing out. They, uh, they put up beautiful blooms for us. These ones are doing fabulous. So that's just, the leaves are so pretty. And imagine in a couple years when they've just grown together more and we just have little ivy-like leaves all the way around. The peonies, I mean, these I, these I planted from tubers this year, so they will take several years to get big. This I planted as a plant last year, so hopefully maybe next year he'll bloom. Usually peonies take about three years. More tubers we planted. All the lupins doing well, and hopefully they will maybe bloom for us next year. But sometimes when you're planting things, it's not going to be instant gratification. You know, you got to wait a year or two or three and that's not great, but it is what it is. Foxtail ferns, our little hydrangea. Enjoy that one little bloom. He's so small compared to his sister in the sun. So the bloom struck hydrangea in the sun down there. These two were the same size, planted the same day. That one's in the sun, and this one is in the shade. And so the one in the sun struggled so much more the first year. This one thrived the first year. And now coming back, the one in the sun is just doing so much better once he established. This is a belly slippers hibiscus, which after three years has still only bloomed for me once and it's still very small. I think he needs a lot more sun, so I think he will be moved next year. And my Vitex, this guy is in the sun, but we just planted him last October. He's supposed to fill in this whole area back here, but he's about doubled in size, so you know, he's doing great. I'm coming all the way back here, which I don't usually, because this is like Weed Alley, to show you all right, here I direct seeded some cone flowers and they are coming up. So if the cone flowers in the jug ever come up and live, they will continue to go back here in the land of no blooms. But at least one, two, three, four cone flowers. So we can get some tall color back here along with the salvia and the lupin, you know. Eventually, eventually the shade garden will also be fuller, even if it's never as bloomable as the sun garden. So that is it. The garden for the month of June. This guy honestly may be my favorite right now. I don't know. He's at least my favorite on this half of the garden. I think I have a favorite for every section. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next month for our July garden tour. And also look out last month, I did an entire video on just what was blooming for the month of May, because when I do these garden tours, you get a great snippet of what's blooming. But even if I pick the best day of the month. You know, the, the agapanthus and the daylilies and the coneflowers and the lantana and the super tunias. Like everything's never going to be blooming at the same time. This butterfly bush is in bloom right now. The other one is not. That salvia looks fabulous, but these lantana are setting new buds. The knockout roses are setting new buds. So starting a new what's blooming for the month tour for at least the summer and I will come out and take videos of what's blooming at the peak 
of its bloom for the month. And then if you're planning your garden, you can see, you know, what might be blooming for the entire month, even if it's not blooming this day. So I hope that helps. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.